Hey everybody, so I wanted to do a, a little short video here. I'm actually finishing up and heading back, but I'm at Hill Farmstead Brewery in Greensboro, Ben, Vermont. I'm super excited to have been here. Um, also super excited to report that while wonderfully so, it's not at all what I expected. It is every bit as good as I hoped it would be. Um, met a lot of great people, had some good conversations. Um, I've, I've bought a lot of beer, so I'll be doing some reviews coming up pretty soon. Um, this this brewery, I just talked about the journey a little bit. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere, which is, is part of what makes this so wonderful. You know, I talked to people who've been here several times, coming up from New York. You know, nobody's close, um, but they all have worked really hard to be here, and so, you know, that kind of that kind of makes it special. Um, like I said, I, you know, I'm going to do some some probably more formal reviews of these beers. I'm um, also Jake. I'm sorry, I was not able to get any IPAs from here. They only serve them on site. And I was not able to get any heady. We got a long drive back, but I will gladly share what I have with you. Um, these are truly fantastic beers, and it was every every bit worth the trip. This is Hill Farmstead Brewing. Um, as always, if you're drinking, keep drinking. If you're brewing, keep brewing. And um, cheers, Prost, and a votre sang. Have a good night. Hey everybody, so uh, tonight what I kind of want to do, I want to give you a little bit of an update, I know I've been a bit of a bad reviewer, I haven't put up a video in a while, and um, kind of kind of want to talk about a few things, first I want to talk about why, and um, second I want to talk about my experience at Hill Farmstead, this is a uh, video I've been, been meaning to do for a good little bit, and I've been pondering the best way to do it, because given given the level of hype that surrounds that place and everything they make, I wanted to make sure, first of all, that I gave it enough time that I could be honest about it. But but second of all, you know, I want to talk about, you know, um, appearance versus reality in, in, in terms of it. And, and just to talk about my experience going there, things I liked and things I didn't like. And in addition to that, um, I also wanted to do what may or may not be a fairly brief review of Edith, a dark farmhouse ale that they produce. Um, and so we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, as far as why I haven't posted a review. So, as you may have noticed, the, the beers that, that I have done more formal reviews of have been kind of classic beers. Uh, we did the, uh, we did, we've done the Hennepin so far from, uh, from Amagon Brewing at Cooperstown, and we've done um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale from Chico and Asheville, North Carolina, I think it is. Um, and those two were, were pretty easy, easy reviews because they were they were pretty easy beers. They're pretty straightforward. Even though you know, I, I would say that that uh, that Hennepin is obviously more complex, but it's all there. It just takes time to parse through. The one I've been really wanting to do <laughs> is Saint Bernard Sabbath Twelve. It's one of my favorite beers of, of all time. And I have done three videos now, three full videos, and I have not had a single one I am happy with. Uh, I, the thing that I'm realizing about it, which I never had to think about because it's never trying to make a video, is that Belgian strong dark ales, especially good ones, um, you know, they, they take time that you don't really have on a video to unfold and give you everything that they've got and try and I, I don't have a great video editing ability and that's why for the most part these beers are one take um, and I don't have enough money to just buy endless endless mounds of beer to keep doing it over and over and over again and I have a real job so I can't really you know I can't really just keep sitting there and doing it over and over and over again and I'd be drunk off my ass all the time if I tried so that's the one I've been wanting to do and I haven't been able to do it. Um, I'd like to tell you it's coming. I don't know. Um, I, I just, just actually attempted to do one and I'm not real happy with it either. So I'm going to try to parse through all of the ideas that I have for a better format for those more formal reviews to find something that's going to fit. Um, but anyway, so uh, moving on from that, um, 
we'll do um, a little little conversation about Edith here, and um, I'll talk about it a little bit. It's the first time I've ever had having this beer. I did not have any of it at Hill Farmstead, um, and I haven't opened any of the bottles that I have. So this is the only one that I have actually reserved for myself to consume right away whenever I wanted. The others are on the shelf. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this open. I'm going to read about it a little bit first. So it says, Edith, 1897 to 1992, was our grandfather's sister, and Hill Farmstead Brewery rests upon the land that was once home to her and her 13 siblings. In her honor, this dark farmstead ale is crafted from American malted barley, German roasted malts, European hops, our farmhouse yeast, and water from our well. Unfiltered and naturally carbonated, this is the ale that I dreamed of share with Edith. So, I'm excited about this. You don't see a lot of, uh, of dark farmhouse beers, um, which is a shame. I, th I, I would like to see more. Um, and uh, I've liked everything I've had so far. Uh, this is 6% alcohol by volume. And I'll go ahead and get it open. So, to talk about my my trip and how I came to get up there, we, me, me and my family were on vacation in Maine, and I knew um, that if I didn't if I didn't get up there when I was close, and we don't, you know, we're not up in Maine a lot, that I would I would probably never be that close again, or at least not anytime soon. And what the hell else is in Vermont, right? Other than more breweries, and they're they're not beer people, so. You know, I can't build a family vacation around that. Um, so, fortunately, my, my father, very good man who does a lot for me, and I certainly think a lot of, agreed to go with me. And we made what ended up being a four-hour drive through Maine and New Hampshire, all of the way to... Uh, Vermont. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this here real quick. Um, getting a nice two-finger head. Pretty much pitch black. Hold it up to the light here. Yeah, it's it's pretty opaque. I'm getting light at the corners, but that is about it. Um, good, nice, frothy head. Um, a very pretty beer, honestly. Um, don't know how else to describe it than that. So anyway, um, a trip to Hill Farmstead from Maine uh, was, was about, like I said, about four hours. Drove through New Hampshire and the, uh, the White Mountain National Forest, which is very, very, very beautiful. It's a very scenic drive. And then we finally got to Vermont. So from there on, as a lot of people I think will tell you, and it is true, um, you pretty much drive through the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, there is a point where you get no cell reception. I don't think, I'll, I'll say this, I don't think it's nearly as hard to find as people say it is. Now, you're not going to find it without directions. There's no question about that, and I would print theirs off. But if you follow their directions, it's it's not, it's 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 pretty hard to miss. Um, so, go down this road, a lot of, you know, pretty wooded areas through the town of, of Greensboro, Greensboro Bend, and um, turn on... Um, to not Sparhawk, but uh, the road opposite that, I forget the name of it, Taylor Road. Turn on to Taylor Road and head up that way a little bit. Um, still still paved at this point, and then we uh, we turn on to, uh, to Hill Road. So that was about three miles, I want to say, of unpaved road, no cell phone service whatsoever. It had already been a beautiful ride, long day. Um, and, you know, out of nowhere springs up this beautiful, beautiful patch of grass um, and a bunch of cars and people getting out and going there. And um, going on with the uh, with the description here, we're starting to get some nice lacing as the head fades. Um, but anyway, so we come upon it, and it's it's a really 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 pretty really scenic just you know I mean well manicured grass has a nice and I'll uh, you might just link my Instagram on my page. I've got some pictures of it up on there. Um, there's a nice uh, it's a nice gazebo outside, and then the production area and the barrel room. So. So, um, we'll go ahead and take in the nose here, too. Oh, that's interesting. See, it's getting a good peppery note, but that there's, there's, there's a roasted malt note, and so it's marrying, it's marrying really well there. Um, it's marrying really well and creating this really kind of like um, a coffee shop vibe, which um, you don't really, don't really think of with Saison's. I mean, it, it did say it had a what? Let's see here. Um, German roasted malt, so um, that's definitely coming through. And like I said, it's 
It's marrying really well with a very clear peppery vibe. It smells really great. Obviously, um, not getting any lemon. Uh, roasted malt kind of takes care of that. It's mainly coffee right now. I'm sure it'll settle out and I'll pick up some other stuff, but coffee may be a subtle undercurrent of prune, maybe. Um, but anyway, so um, I, I finally get there, and I'm kind of, and this this is part of the problem with my experience there. It, it was a great experience, don't get me wrong, but I, I'm getting to that. Uh, I was kind of overwhelmed. Um, you know, this is something I was, I was really, really, really excited about. And I think you'll notice if you do go on my Instagram page, please follow me. Um, I've got a lot, of, a lot of other good shit on there. I tend to post more on there than you'll hear. Um, I didn't really know how to process everything, and I wanted to get the most out of experience that I kind of felt and still feel that's not likely I'll have again. Uh, I wasn't really sure how to do it. So I, I get there, and I, you know, I go in, and I want to get a drink. And, and here comes one of, one of my actual problems with the brewery. So the taproom is very nice, very pretty. Um, kind of nice wood finish, pretty pretty bare bones. I mean, it's it's well designed, but there's you know there's a couple tables around the edges, but mostly it's kind of an open open floor area with a bar. And I walk up, wait in line for a few minutes, and then realize that there is a ticketed growler line and a serving line, one which is at the left of the bar growler line, and one which is at the right. And it's got a, there's a now serving you know little um, scroll by digital digital wall counter and um, stuff like that, but. I think apparently there was somewhere um, a, a, a piece of paper taped to a column or whatever that said this. I didn't. I sure as hell didn't see it. Um, so I was kind of irritated about that. Um, and I'm sure that they have their reasons for doing things that way. It's probably for a bottle release day or any one of their million beer release days. But, but to me, it was just kind of irritating. Um, in addition to that, and th this is this is one that's entirely my fault. So the Festival of Farmhouse Sales, which is a big event they do there um, once a year, was actually that weekend. Now, I didn't have the time due to the scheduling of the vacation to make that. So when I got there, there were no farmhouse sales on draft, which is the whole reason that I, I personally wanted to go. Um, fortunately, there were uh, bottles for sale for on-premise consumption. So uh, I got one glass of Edward, which was great, but not what I wanted, so I can't really say much about it. Um, and the rest are bottles I got. Now, you know, lending itself to the communal atmosphere of a brewery like that, fortunately I was able to find some nice people to share some bottles with because the 750s, you either have to buy for two or pour into two glasses. Um, I had their, and I had Anna, and um, which, I had Anna and I had Arthur. Or Anne and Arthur, I can't remember exactly. I have to go look, but uh, they were they were all fantastic. Um, went outside. It was a pretty hot day actually, and the one other complaint that I have is that I wish there were more outdoor seating, um, more picnic tables. I think there were maybe two, and then you know other than on the the, the light terrace of the actual um, tap room, and. Um, and so, you know, either kind of, and one of them was in the heat or the gazebo, which only had one picnic table on it and some barrels you could kind of lean shit on or whatever. Um, so, wish there was more of that. Um, but anyway, uh, additionally, the shop. So, the shop is just a cutaway portion where they have some extra barrels stored. They have um, some example bottles of what you can buy, some shirts at the end, and you get in line. I didn't like that. Once again, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. But I can't help but think with a place like that, that they maybe should present things a little bit nicer. That being said, their job is not to entertain me. Um, and, you know, the beer speaks for itself. The environment and how far people are willing to go speaks for itself. It's part of the experience. Um, speaking of experience, let's go ahead and taste this and see what we think. Um, everything I've had so far has been really excellent, except for Florence, which was really good. But not my favorite. That's their uh, farmhouse wheat. Whoo! All right. So that is a uh, that is incredibly sour. Um, honestly, in a lot of ways, like Florence was. Um, this is going to take me a second. So we'll just kind of chill with it here and see what we get. That that sourness is really kind of all-consuming. It's 
Um, I will go ahead and skip ahead of the mouthfeel while I try to try to sift through what the hell it is I'm tasting right now. Um, it's uh, it's very silky. It's very smooth. Um, very nice. So definite prune. Um, I will say the benefit to putting uh, this uh, this malt heavy beer, which I can apparently say now, um, works in in a, in a sour context is that it it allows you to taste the malt in a way that you don't um, with a lot of the beers that have a uh, lighter kilns malt malts as the base for their sours. Um, so this is bracingly sour, as I said. Um, getting, getting a decent bit of funk here. Maybe a little bit of prune. Some kind of soy sauce umaminess, but not, not in as roasted a way as you might get with a sour stout or just a general stout. It's still very zesty. Um, like I said, you know, I know I know I said I didn't get lemon in the nose, but I, I do get it in the taste. Um, curiously enough, the one the one complaint I can say I already have about this is that for it being so dark, um, it seems to have more in common with some of the Weizenbox that I've had, the dark Weizen Weizenbox, um, than a than a than a dark Belgian style beer. Um, so. You know, you take that into consideration. So, um, this is really interesting. I, I, I'm not going to say that I love it. Um, this probably is kind of a tie for tie with Florence. I, I wish I liked this more than I, more than I did, but it's, it's still it's it's an excellent beer. Don't get me wrong, but you know we're talking like mountain mountain top comparisons here, you know. Um, this is definitely you know. I can say this much: there was definitely no intention of making this style like at all. Um. So, my my recommendation, if you have a chance to purchase some of their their items based on what I've had, would be if you could only buy two, buy Arthur and Clara. Um, Arthur being their farmhouse sale, Clara being their their grisette. Um, those are to me considerably less sour in in range than these two are, and more traditional. Um, I think they are they are both phenomenal. They are by far my favorites of, of any of the stuff from them that I've had. Still got Anna to try. But um overall comments on the experience, is the beer worth the trip? Is it good? Um the beer is phenomenal. Yes, it is worth the trip. My my biggest recommendation for you guys would be um if you do have the chance to go, go. But try not to imagine what it's going to taste like because you'll only be doing yourself a disservice if you do. Um, I earlier in the year, and you can you, I'll I'll post a link to the review in here. It's it's on my page. I did a review of um, Suarez Family Beers uh, Triangular Nature, which I loved. Thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Still, even after Far Hill Farmstead, the best beer I've had this year better than anything I've had with them, truly. Although, that's, you know, what do you say? They're both, they're both excellent. But anyway, um, Dan Suarez, who runs Suarez Brewing, uh, was, was trained, um, at least partially, under Sean Hill, who runs Hill Farmstead. So I assumed that there was going to be a very similar character to their interpretations of farmhouse beers. Not at all true. Um, night and day. I personally... Though they're both out of this world good, um, much prefer Dan Suarez's take on the style. But um, you know, so the reason I say all that is it kind of it hampered my experience a little bit because deep down in my head, though I, I've tried to fight it, 
I half expected them to be very similar in execution, and they're just not. Um, so just, you know, you should just go with an open mind and be ready to experience whatever whatever you get because that's just that's the best way to do it. Um, please, if y'all been to Hill Farmstead, or you know, if you haven't and you have any more questions for me, please put up your questions in the in the, uh, in the comments. I would love love to talk more about it. Um, it's truly an experience, you know. I I, I can say that with with absolute certainty. Um, and you know, if if you're drinking, keep drinking. If you're brewing, keep brewing. Cheers, plus a votre song. And have a good night.